This approach is called the risk neutral valuation approach. If you were to take a close look at what we've done till now, we haven't explicitly made use of the P up and the 1 minus P up. If this is a piece of information which is available to us, why not look at an approach that directly works with probabilities? Probabilities respectively of moving up and of moving down. So we are given that in this single period binomial tree, there are two possible outcomes, the up node and the down node. Standing as of this node, I don't really know which of the two outcomes will eventually realize. Okay, so I have two outcomes, the probability of, you know, realizing these two outcomes are respectively P up and 1 minus P up. If I were to land at the up node, my stock price as of this time, which is actually capital T, which is the maturity of my option, can be either 44 or 36. The payoff of my call option, which is the function of this stock price, can be either $2 or $0. Okay, so this is my random variable. This is a function of my random variable. Okay, now to make use of these probabilities, how about I write down an equation like this and ask you if you can defend this equation or not. Essentially, this equation reads something like this. 40, the current price of my stock is equal to the expected value of my future stock price, 44 times P up plus 36 times 1 minus P up this is the expected value discounted to today using the risk-free rate of interest. See, it's e to the power minus 0 0.04 times 0 0.25. Okay, this is the equation which I'm proposing. If this equation can be defended, then by implication, I can actually write a similar equation as this for my call option as well. That means if I can defend this equation for the underlying asset, I can by implication write the same style equation for a contingent claim also which is written on top of this underlying asset. So this equation reads as expected payoff discounted to today using the risk-free rate of interest is equal to the fair premium of the European call. Now, coming back to checking if this equation can be defended or not, well, it cannot be defended. The reason is that in the market, we assume that you have many risk averse investors. Okay, these investors, they know that what is being discounted is not a certain cash flow. What is being discounted is the expected value of an uncertain cash flow okay and this discounting is happening at the risk-free rate of interest so risk adverse investors will kind of not digest this equation okay they might say that if you want to use an equation like this please use an appropriate discount rate a discount rate which appropriately reflects the risk embedded in this particular security i mean the underlying stock okay now if i were to do the hard work of actually figuring out what is the correct discount rate which does make this equation hold good now that effort does not help in any way as far as this equation is concerned because this is the equation which is more important to me this is the equation which helps me arrive at the fair premium of this European call. The reason why the discount rate which is an appropriate discount rate for this equation doesn't fit in this equation is because the risk embedded in a European call is different from the risk embedded in the underlying stock. We know that a European call option is a leveraged play a European call option has more embedded risk as compared to 
the underlying stock okay so for this equation also i'll have to do again that extra piece of hard work to find out what is the correct discount rate for me to be able to use this equation and arrive at the c naught okay so let's do this to avoid all this hard work of figuring out what is the correct discount rate let's just pick what the real world has to offer specifically let's pick this price of $40 which the real world has determined for us by the interaction of buyers and sellers let's take this price of $40 and enter into another world this is a hypothetical world one in which all investors are risk neutral okay so in this hypothetical world because all investors are risk neutral they don't believe in risk premiums at all irrespective of which instrument we talk about irrespective of the level of embedded risk in any given instrument investors in this risk neutral world they believe that all instruments irrespective of their risk should be rewarded with the same rate of return and that rate of return is the risk free rate of interest okay so in this world which is the risk neutral world this way of finding the fair price or fair value of any given instrument works absolutely fine okay you can defend this particular equation in the risk neutral world because in the risk neutral world even if you are discounting some kind of an expected value of an uncertain or risky cash flow you are still welcome to do this discounting using the risk free rate of interest because this world does not believe in risk premiums but you will have to make one change and that is when you move from the real world to the risk neutral world you will have to accept this that the p up has to be replaced with a hypothetical q up a hypothetical probability let's call it the risk neutral probability of moving up to the up node okay so let's ditch this p up and let's work out a q up and equivalently a 1 minus q up so that this equation is indeed satisfied okay so please note i am moving from a real world probability to a hypothetical risk neutral probability so that this equation is satisfied okay so if i were to rearrange this equation and calculate the q up it comes to this it's e to the power 0 0.01 minus 36 over 40 which is the multiplicative factor which i multiply my current stock price with to arrive at the stock price in the down node see it's 36 over 40 then this is the multiplicative factor which i multiply my current stock price with to arrive at the stock price in my up node so that minus this multiplicative factor in the denominator okay this is the template of q up which i want you to remember okay so q up please check this it comes to 0 0.55025 0 okay once you have the q up this equation is satisfied and by implication as we had in this case this equation is also satisfied one in which i work out the expected payoff of my european call which i am trying to price and i discounted to today using the risk-free rate of interest okay so plug this value of q up into this equation and again you can check that c naught it comes to 1.09 the same premium as we obtained using the previous two approaches now Please note that when I moved from the real world to the risk neutral world, by no means did I make this assumption that investors, they truly speaking, behave in a risk neutral way. Okay, I'm not making that assumption. The only reason I'm moving to this hypothetical risk neutral world is because it, this world, it makes my life easy. 
it makes my life easy and it still gives me a price which matches the price which I get from the other two approaches which are based on no arbitrage. Those two approaches are much much more defendable. Okay, Then please note that think of this risk neutral world to be a different way of actually interpreting the formulas that we arrive at using let's say the perfect hedge approach or for that matter the replicating portfolio approach. That way of interpreting those formulas helps us a lot when it comes to those situations where those other two approaches become difficult to apply. For example, if let's say I were to work with a multi-period binomial tree, the risk neutral valuation approach is much more simpler to apply as compared to the other two approaches. Okay, so that's the intent of you know switching over to this risk neutral world to make our lives simple. Okay, this solved example was to help us understand how these three different approaches with respect to binomial trees work and to confirm that all these three approaches actually are equivalent. In the end, they give us the same result.